sex researcher, and this, this is Tori. And I'm a comedian. So Tori and I met while doing the Week in Sex podcast, mm. which the link is going to be below. And on the podcast, Tori had just been going through a breakup. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the breakup was bad, but the podcast was amazing. <laughs> so I thought it was only fitting to invite Tori back today to answer some of your questions about breakups because you send a lot of them. And well, breakups are pretty bad. Yeah, they're bad. So should we jump right in? Let's do it. Okay. My ex and I were together for about two years and broke up four months ago. I'm not over it. I honestly feel like I'm never going to be happy again. My friends who have been through this seem to have been able to move on quicker. What do I do? Well, I'm actually about four months out of my relationship. Okay. And I think, here's the thing. I, I know people that also move on quicker. And I think it just, everyone is different how quickly you move on. I don't know if she's still talking to her ex. I feel like that makes it more difficult. I think you, you know, people always say like you need closure. And I got like my type of closure. I definitely think that helped me move on because I was like, this is not the right person for me. And I think you just have to know that that person might not be the right person, but you're allowed to miss memories that you guys share together. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I think there's absolutely like a different amount of time that it takes. There's no set period. There's kind of a rule of rule of thumb that it's about half the length of the relationship. Mm. So four months is really not very long. Yeah. Especially if it was two years. And I agree with what you said, like cut off your ex. It's okay to have memories, but you don't have to spend a ton of time thinking about these memories. It's okay to miss someone, but you don't have to just continually ruminate about it. But if you continue to do that, it's only going to make it take long Longer and longer. I'm wondering how to get myself out of the self-pity spiral about being newly single in my 30s. I was in a relationship that I felt like was going somewhere. I was living with my boyfriend and making plans for the future, and now I don't make enough money to live on my own, and I've moved back in with my sister and her family. I'd like to embrace this time rather than being stuck in self-pity. That is a big blow to have been living with someone and then having to move in with your sister and her family. First off, I think she's extremely strong for dealing with this. And I think this is just as my mom says, like another notch on the belt, kind okay. of with her life. Sure. Um, I think she should definitely try to embrace and think about the positive that she gets to spend a lot of time with her sister, because you're gonna move forward from this. It's your night, your life isn't stuck like this forever. This is just a period in your life that you're living with your sister and your family. So take it as a time of, oh, I just get to spend so much time with my family and my sister, rather than feeling sorry. Just kind of embrace it, being like, oh, every night I get to watch TV with them, because this is not going to be your life forever. Yeah, I think that's really great. I hadn't even thought about putting some focus on the time that you're spending with your sister and her family. That could be a really great way to stop focusing on yourself right now and focus on them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Take some time for yourself and do some focusing on yourself, but don't wallow in that self-pity of what's going on. Another thing that you can do since you have this idea of the future that you want is put it on paper, write it down exactly what it is, and then set up a goal on how to get there. Take steps that lead to that plan because you can have the future that you want to have by yourself. It would be great if there was someone else there, but pretty much everything aside from perhaps being married to someone, you can have alone. You can have kids alone, you can have a career alone, you can have a house alone. You can have all of those things. My boyfriend cheated a few months ago and I told him I forgave him, but I guess I haven't. I can't stop checking his emails, his texts, his social media. I haven't found anything suggesting that he's still cheating, but I have so much anxiety and the checking helps it go away but I don't think it's helping the relationship. Okay, so I think that this is really common for people that have been cheated on. Mm -hmm. Like they want to check the other person all the time. And the thing is, is like, yeah, when you do that behavior, it probably has your anxiety level go down, but it doesn't stop your anxiety level from coming back later. Because checking is only going to continue to have you in that spiral of continually checking to get rid of the anxiety. It's not going to actually help your relationship, and it probably is hurting your relationship in a lot of ways and the truth of it is he might be cheating on you he might cheat on you again in the future or he may never cheat on you again in the future but if you continually think about it it's mm. only going to hurt you in the present I once was emotionally cheated on um, what happened was my ex's friends were very young and immature and every time I would go out with them they would say things to me like I wish you weren't here so 
Sam could be my wingman. So I looked through his phone. He was texting his ex previous for me. And it was like a very sexual conversation. I confronted him. We talked about what the issue was um, and why he felt the need to like start sexing this girl. Um, and then from there, I guess it kind of like made me feel maybe I shouldn't put so much, not energy into the relationship, but maybe I need to do more things for myself, which was like starting to do stand up comedy. I don't know, I became less obsessed with like looking at his text and I was like, I either he's going to do it again, as you said, or he's not. And I'm just going to focus on what I really want to do. I think that having the conversation with the person is really important and sort of discussing like, this is what you're doing. Why are you doing it? Like, what are you hoping to get from it? What would you like to see change about our relationship? Is there might be some easy fixes that if you just talk to each other, it can all be worked out. Or there might be bigger issues, which I know can be scary because bigger issues and cheating can yeah. mean breakup, which people are trying to avoid but sometimes it's better to have those conversations because breaking up might be the right answer. But you have to stop doing the safety checking because you're only going to continue to drive yourself nuts. Yes, yeah, like there's someone cheating, but I think like there's always a root cause of why that person does it. Like I had a friend once, she cheated on her girlfriend and she kind of said she did it because her girlfriend was always very self-conscious and anytime you know she would um, give compliments to the girlfriend, she, the girlfriend like didn't take it and I guess she was always too scared to bring things up and that's why she ended up cheating. What's interesting about what you're telling me is that she she was almost like justifying her cheating by yeah, that is true. the other person. Um, like, clearly you could tell which friend I was, right. clearly you could tell which person I was friends with on this side of the relationship. So I, so I definitely think that there are root causes, but I think that a lot of the root causes come from the person who is doing the cheating. Mm -hmm. And they might be looking to blame the other person, but they're still the one that's choosing to do it. Not I was that. brainwashed <laughs> by my friend. I was brainwashed. I left being like, oh, maybe it's okay to cheat. Like, I felt bad for the one who cheated. I can't stop sleeping with my ex. Please help. We broke up a while ago and every time I drink, we end up texting and then having sex. I'm always mad at myself after, but it always feels so good in the moment. I think I lie to myself and they say that it's fine and that I won't care, but I always do. Oh, and when I started to date other people, he comes around more, which I know is fucked up, right? I mean, she's just going through a really bad cycle. Yeah. This is a bad, bad, bad cycle. What do you think is the worst part about it? I don't want to say that I think he's using her. I think maybe they're both kind of using each other, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. One might be using them for sex and the other might be using them for emotional connection. You're just kind of going in a cycle that's not really going anywhere. It's kind of like the hamster in the wheel, like you're not you know, but the hamster like stops at the ex's house and then drinks and then stops at the ex's house and drinks and stops at the ex's house. Like that's what's going on. And it, what's interesting about that too is that I think people get trapped in these cycles and don't even realize that they're in that cycle. They mm. just think that it's something that keeps happening and they don't know how or they don't know how to stop it. When one of the things that you just pointed out is like, you're in a car, you're driving, you're on your way to the ex's house, you have a drink with the ex, then you kiss the ex, then you have sex with the ex. Yeah. These are all steps and these are all places that you can stop what you're doing. And the mm -hmm. fact that he just pops back up right. when you get interested in someone else or start dating someone else, like that's okay problem and that's someone trying to sabotage or keep you around and as you said I think you know you're both using each other. I feel like maybe she should set little goals for herself for the next three weeks I'm not going to contact him and then once you hit that three weeks you can be like okay for another four weeks I'm not going to contact him it's, and maybe you can just get a high off of like knowing that you haven't seen him. When you take that control and you start to like look at these things as choices that you're making you can then say I'm making this choice to not contact him for myself. That actually makes you stronger and a more powerful person. So that is it for now. Tori why don't you tell everyone where they can find you. Okay so first you can find me on Instagram at Tori Piskin and I'm also starting a podcast with my mom called Got It For My Mama 
where we talk about dating and relationship questions, sex questions. And it's really great because we have the wisdom of a six-year-old woman, even though she doesn't look sexy, she looks amazing. And someone who's, you know, in her late 20s and through the thick of things of being single. Great. So everybody check out the podcast. It is out now. I've heard the first episode and it is great. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, and you can find all of my contact information below. As always, make sure to subscribe to Tori's channel and I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.